An English goal-scoring legend has decided to hang up her boots. Liverpool's karmic chickens come home to roost. Chelsea get a shiny new home that's inspired by Westminster Abbey. Jesse Marsh wings his way on over to Austria. And geography, just as it always does, saves the day for one U.S. national team hopeful. It's Thursday, January 12th, 2017. From Dirty Tackle, Howler Magazine, and the Total Soccer Show, this is The Goalmouth, a podcast that serves up bite-sized bits of the day's soccer news in easily digestible form. Up first, England forward Kelly Smith announced her retirement from professional soccer on Wednesday. The 38-year-old, who earned 117 caps in a 20-year national team career, played in six major tournaments and represented Team Great Britain at the 2012 Olympics. In her time with Arsenal Ladies, Smith won the Women's Premier League four times, the UEFA Women's Cup once, and was appointed a member of the Order of the British Empire. Most importantly of all, none of her teams ever embarrassed themselves in a major international tournament against Iceland, like a certain other team, which is a fact worth repeating, if only to annoy both Daryl Grove and Ryan Bailey. Smith did knock home 46 goals for England, which is the record for the women's national team and the fourth most when you combine the national teams. She's behind Wayne Rooney, Bobby Charlton, and Gary Lineker, two ahead of Jimmy Greaves, and 45 ahead of Andy Cole, who somehow only ever scored once for England. That is shocking. EFL Cup trolling news now. Southampton defeated Liverpool 1-0 at St. Mary's in the first leg of their EFL Cup semifinal. The lone goal came courtesy of Nathan Redmond and, I have to assume, a massive strike of karma. Because prior to the match, the official Liverpool Twitter account tweeted out the essential information about the game, which would be time, opponent, appropriate hashtag, match-specific graphic, etc. Uh, there were two slight issues, however. One, Southampton was spelled incorrectly. Only one H there, guys, not two. And two, that graphic I mentioned, it was an illustration of four Liverpool Liverpool players, specifically the four players in the current Liverpool roster that had been signed from Southampton. That would be Nathaniel Klein, Dejan Lovren, Adam Alana, and Sadio Mane. Meanwhile, somewhere in Cardiff, Ricky Lambert pouted. Uh, the Liverpool account promptly corrected the spelling error, but not the image, meaning that unintentional and intentional trolling can still combine to hand out a 1-0 loss. Staying in England, Chelsea have received local approval to rebuild Stamford Bridge in a move that would dramatically increase the ground's capacity to 60,000 seats. As reported by The Guardian, a meeting of the Planning and Development Committee of Hammersmith and Fulham Council unanimously approved plans submitted by Chelsea for a new stadium that could be completed in time for the 2021-2022 season. The new ground is expected to cost at least £500 million, or, if you're going by Chinese Super League terms, 8.33 Oscars, 20 Ramirez's, and a whole bunch of John Obi Michaels, given that he essentially left on a free. Chelsea have been looking to build a new stadium to compete with their Premier League rivals for a number of years, most notably in 2011, when plans to build a ground at the Battersea Power Station were blocked. As I said, it's unlikely that the facility will be completed before 2021. However, if Antonio Conte works the magic that we've all come to expect, there's a decent chance that the stadium will be ready to go by next Thursday at the latest. Managerial news now. The soccer minds over at Red Bull are nothing if not observant. When they spot talent, they send it to Austria. At least, that's the case for New York Red Bull's coach Jesse Marsh, who has been appointed manager of Red Bull Salzburg, which I suppose makes him simultaneously a former and current Red Bull manager. It's all a bit confusing because it seems that Salzburg haven't actually sacked their current manager, Oscar Garcia. However, he's a bit of a hot commodity, having guided the team to second place in the table midway through the Austrian Bundesliga. There's rumored interest from Malaga, as well as a few other clubs. So now that Marsh has been made official, a gambling man might expect Oscar Garcia to be on the move in the very near future. Meanwhile, reports indicate that Chris Armas, Marsh's assistant at New York, will take over coaching duties for the MLS club. And finally, Kakuta Mane is officially an American citizen who can't yet officially play for the U.S. men's national team. U.S. soccer confirmed on Wednesday that the 22-year-old has received his citizenship, but still has to wait for clearance from FIFA. Um, Mane was called up by Bruce Arena for the USA's January camp, but still can't play in official matches because, you know, rules. Uh, more specifically, it's because Mane, who was born in the Gambia, played for that country's U13 and U14 national teams prior to moving to the United States in 2010. Since that time, he twice turned down call-ups from the Gambia's U20 team, in order to focus on his club career and his residence qualifications. That's because in order to fulfill residency requirements, Mane had to live in the United States for five years, which was difficult given that he plays for the Vancouver Whitecaps. However, in a phrase that can't have been said many times in modern history, it was geography to the rescue. You see, Mane lives in a census-designated place called Point Roberts. Yes, that's the actual term. Yes, that's the name of the place. It is a part of the United States, but it is not physically connected to it. That's because way back in 1846, the U.S. and Great Britain signed the Treaty of Oregon, which established a boundary between the U.S. and Canada at the 49th parallel. Yes, that's right, we're a history podcast now, albeit briefly. 
What the people responsible for drawing up that treaty didn't realize was that a tiny part of the Tawasen Peninsula, which is a part of Canada, extended past the boundary line. The British requested that all of the peninsula be considered a part of Canada, and that request evidently fell on deaf ears because 170 years later, it's still a part of the U.S. That means that Mane was able to technically live in the United States, but quickly and easily drive the 23-ish miles to work every day. Now all he needs is clearance from FIFA, and the Pacey winger will be free and clear to represent the U.S. national team. So three cheers for geography, which, once again, is a phrase that has probably never been said before. That's it for today's Goldmouth. You can explore all of these stories in more depth by subscribing to our newsletter. The link is in the show notes. If you want to help grow the podcast, you can subscribe in iTunes. You can tell a friend about the program or leave us a review at whatever place you tend to leave podcast reviews. Could be iTunes, could be a bathroom stall, whatever works for you. I can also confirm that we now have over 100 reviews, so Daryl will be pleased. Next up is This American Life. There are only 21,310 reviews ahead of us. We should be able to close that gap by, say, the time Chelsea move into a renovated Stanford bridge. I've been Taylor Rockwell. Ryan Bailey will be with you tomorrow. But until then, I'll leave you with today's Goldmouth top tip. Geography is your friend, especially if you want to play for the USA.